ओके आई एम हैविंग अ ट्रबल एडिंग हर अगेन जस्ट अ मिनट Hello everyone. Hi. Hello ma'am. Very happy to be Hello, here. Hello ma'am. Good evening ma'am. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. You're so grateful you. to have you. Uh so nice. I uh, yeah. thank you very much. Sorry, oh you can hear me very well. Uh, okay, I'll I'll just start with the introduction ma'am. Then the floor will be yours. Uh just for the people who aren't aware of what we are going to do here uh, i am a volunteer from satvik soul committee of our organization and uh, we are currently sector 8 company registered under the ministry of corporate affairs of government of india working on the uh, sdg goals pan india and we have done campaigns and in and work in many sectors like women's health protection of wetland quality education climate actions restoration wow. of environment and many other fields and um, wow. it, it's it's a very great uh, opportunity for us to have a talk with people like you who have experiences who have talent so that you know they can put forth their ideas uh, on an open platform like this so that people all over the world can connect and learn and uh, right now i take the privilege to introduce our guest uh, ms chizoba Enzia Kaur uh, she is a member of AIS and Renewable Energy working group in Yongo and talking about her experiences and interests in climate justice and renewable energy system uh, which is why she joined the group she also had an opportunity to participate in the AIS hackathon in Bonn uh, which focused on the innovative solutions for clean energy at local level she has also had the great opportunity of delegating which means representing nigeria at a regional conference of youth africa and made her contribution both on energy agriculture and youth engagement and uh, she is currently the founder of choza advisory and climate technology solutions and youth for green hydrogen lead nigeria ma'am the floor is all yours and uh, we would be really grateful to listen from your end if you could just uh, turn your video on people are really eager to see you also hi everyone hello can you see me um, i don't know ma'am actually okay. can you see me yes hi. we are able to see you hello ma'am i'm sorry i'm on a uh, sweater <laughs> Yeah, that's because it's very cold here, yeah, and yeah, uh, for, forgive me. I would have wore a suit, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here, and yeah, I'm very happy to be meeting everyone on um on Sat Big Um Soul Foundation. I am very happy to have been here among so many other people you could have uh, brought in the show. You chose to interview me today, <laughs> so yeah, it's a privilege and uh, an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, um I would have said um maybe one or two things about me but I feel like you've said it all. <laughs> yeah. I'm the I'm the lead for Green Hydrogen uh the youth for Green Hydrogen in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, the youth for Green Hydrogen the, the head office is actually in India and yeah, our co-founder and our founder are from India and yes, we have been trying to do one or two things as we guys to push more on green hydrogen growth as green hydrogen as is uh, considered a new way of um, is considered in the renewable energy sector is still very new right and it has um, significantly low carbon emissions than grey hydrogen and it is uh, produced by steam reforming of um, natural gas which makes up the bulk of the hydrogen market so yeah in nigeria we are bringing more youth um together to like maybe advocate more about the, um the benefits of green hydrogen and yes they actually push it for the aspiration of um, people um going green right which is um yeah the, the 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 one of the things we need to do in order to achieve net zero right yeah thank you so yeah so that's maybe just more about me <laughs> yeah what i do as regards to green hydrogen 
in Nigeria. Okay. Okay, I was on mute. We are like really curious to know about uh, what really motivated you to, you know, start your journey in this field. Oh, my journey is a um, an interesting one, and I hope um, it encourages more people, especially women, right, into coming into the renewable energy sector. Actually, I uh, what I read has nothing to do with renewable energy. Renewable energy is actually very new. Um, not so so long actually uh i read banking and finance and when i read, uh, when i graduated from school i started working in an engineering company i was working as an admin ad- administrator so everything for me was fascinating from the from electrical engineering to mechanical engineering then you talk about uh solar engineering it was very very interesting for me so i really wanted to know more about solar panels i wanted to know more about um renewable energy then I I didn't even know anything as for that to climate action or climate or whatever. I was just, I wanted to know more about solar panels and all that. So it led me to take on so many professional courses. I did a whole lot of professional courses. I I had to do like a whole lot, including solar, learning about um, electrical energy, solar energy. I did a whole lot of courses with several universities. And yeah, I was very passionate about it. I really like solar panels. Even if you go on my Instagram page, you will see me with maybe some pictures of me and solar panels if I'm not um, giving out to charity. Um, actually, maybe on field installing or maybe in the office with one, maybe doing one or two things as regards to solar panels and all that so that's what actually um, brought me into this field so why I was in this field I wanted to know okay why do we want solar panels why was the need to why was it need to go green or just solar panels right so that's how I fell into the field of um, learning about climate change and all that funny enough it was uh, so around March that I joined a community community action against plastic waste and it was around uh, September that I became a full member of Young Gold, but before then, yeah, I've been reading so much about climate action and, and yeah, I, I, I once uh, worked with a company as a climate finance specialist. So all those things, it started from me wanting to know more about solar panels. Yeah, thank you. So basically your uh, technical inclination towards solar panels brought you here, right? So that's, that's a great thing, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, uh, ma'am, you're one of the leads of uh, Zoba Advisory, if I'm not wrong. Um, can you speak a bit about what your community does and what your vision is and what your goals are? So, right, um, I found out what led to the, uh, to the development of Zoba Advisory was that I found that the majority of people do not know anything as regards to climate change. So when I started, like I said, for me, I started knowing more, learning more about climate change and how to take action and how to develop solutions as we, that can help to combat climate change when I learned about solar panels. So for some people like for me, for some people like me who, who had the opportunity to maybe go to the university, go to schools, you can see that many of us don't even know about climate change. So talk about the women in the villages or the young boys in the villages or something. They don't even know anything as regards to climate change. They don't even know what is happening. They just see maybe they just experience drought or they experience flood, but then they don't know, okay, why is it excessively much? If you look today on the internet, you'll find that that a lot of places in Nigeria has in Nigeria has been flooded and a lot of people have died due to the flooding. But many people don't know what is happening. If you had some people that will tell you the world is coming to an end, or maybe it's their sins that's causing all flood and all that so a lot of people don't know why things are like that so it led me to develop Zoba advisory so we start um, what we do actually is that we provide advisory services for startups that are building solutions because we notice that a lot of people that are building like um, new companies they don't um, consider the effects of their solutions on the climate right so it was important that we give advisory services to some people like that that are developing solutions to let them know that oh you might build this thing and it might have an effect on climate. So you need to consider it. You need, okay, just say, let's say for a company that is starting up, uh, maybe they want to produce drinks, soft drinks like Coca-Cola, right? So we can tell them instead of starting up with plastics, 
right? And in the next in the next fifty years, it will be very difficult for us to like stop the use of faith. It's better you start with this, or it's better you start with that. Okay, instead of building this technology solution that might cause so many emissions on the planet or on the climate, and then it affects everybody. Okay, you can do this to combat it. You can do this and just make it done, not like it shouldn't be done this way. You can actually create what you want to do, what develop what you want to do, but in a different kind of way, right? So that's one of the things we actually do as a bad vice way. And, and the other things we do is that we created an initiative to train 100 boys and 100 women. The 100 boys, we want to teach them about renewable energy technology so it's more like an it, it, it's more like a poverty elevation and what we plan to do is so we we want to connect with um companies solar companies right go to schools and teach them about this new technology because um for solar solar is evolving every day and if the people in africa don't even know about um solar panels talk more of when it evolves how would they learn more about that? So we want to go into this community, teach these young boys about solar panels and even teach them like create skills for them, green skills, renewable energy skills, because when they have those kind of skills, they don't have to work for companies that are climate wreckers. They just go ahead, work for companies that, you know, that are looking to go green and all that. So we also want to help women women in the community, right? Like the villages, we want to teach them about, want to tell them about climate change because these women at the end of the day are the ones that are going to give birth to children. And if they give birth to these children, they, have, they will pass those knowledge down to those children. So it's, a, it's, so it's important for us to teach these women about climate change so that they can pass it down to their generations. So this is what Zoba Advisory actually does. We provide advisory services, we talk about... Um, talk about um, plastic pollutions and tell them, okay, this is what you can do and this is what you can do. We talk about, okay, development of technology, this is what you can about and make it like this so that it doesn't you know, affect the planet. So that's more like what we do. Thank you. You explained very descriptively, ma'am. And uh, meanwhile, uh, people had a bit of questions. As people from India, we are just aware of what's happening in India. They're, they're quite curious to know about what's the situation out there in Nigeria. How were you able to spread um, awareness amongst the youth? Like what was your initiative? What was your first step or your baby steps, what we call? Okay. When I learned about um, the old climate change stuff, the first step was to join a community, which I told you is Community Action Against Plastic Waste. Then the next step was to join I, I, I joined Yongo. I applied as a member. I joined communities where we have youth of exceptional visions and skills, youth who wants to create solutions in their society. But okay, maybe if I wasn't on Yongo or if I had met um, um, uh, Sadik, right, I would not be on this show. So it was important for me to join communities like that and meet with other youth who are looking to create change in their society because that is the only way. Collectively, you know, collaborating, rubbing minds, bringing different ideas, coming together, that's the only way we can develop solutions because only you can't do it, right? You can't do it alone. So you need people to come together, right? To push, to, to advocate, right? To create solutions, to deepen democracy, to come out and campaign and say, okay, we don't want this things like this. You want people to come out and say, okay, let's write policies like this. I've been in so many Akatins since I have joined, since I've started um, doing this. I've been in some Akatins, a, a policy Akatin in Nigeria, right? Um, I was actually, one of the things I proposed was carbon sequestration because the, the climate uh, acts we have, like our, the, the, the current policies we have, right? Many of them are just paperworks. You have so many things written on papers, but they're not being implemented. They say, they'll go to COP27 or COP26 or whatever, and they say, okay, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, we are going to do that, and we are going to do that. And then next year, they go again, we are going to do this. So the things you say you're going to do, the things that are written on the papers, where, where is it? The technologies you say you're going to implement, where is it? So these things are very important. So one of the Akatins I actually joined, um, that's a Nigerian policy Akatin, so I advise you. And one of the things we said, we listed out, we listed out, okay, we want the Nigerian government, right, 
to empower students, PhD students, give them scholarship, let them go to carry out further research. Because if they're not carrying out further research, if we don't know more, we cannot create more technology. So these things are very important. Okay, bring, if you say you're going to build this technology and it is in the paper or, or, as at last two years, why has it not been implemented? What are they doing about it? So all these things are important. So I had to like, you know, even the Akatin and Bon, one of the things we did was to develop a um, solution for the renewable energy community there, right? And I believe, yes, it has been implemented because yeah, the, the United Nations are actually working on that part. So for me, I it was very important to come come together with you. I can't raise my voice alone. I can't I can't be the only one creating a technical solution. I can't be the only one campaigning. So it was important for me to like come together, meet with youth to develop this idea, to collaborate, to rub minds and implement the solutions together. Just like we want to go and do at Koi conference of youth. We are coming there, different people from their different regions. They are coming there to say this is what is happening in India. This is what is happening in Mozambique. This is what is happening in Nigeria. This is what is happening in Germany, and this is the things we want our government to do, right? But so it was very important for me to you know connect with people of like minds, and th that's the more reason why I became a member on all the some um, all the some um, platforms like Unify, like the award, like um Young Go and all that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hope I'm not taking too um, much of your time. <laughs> no, no, uh, you you explained very well, and we are quite happy for that. Uh, Ma'am, adding to the questions, there is another question from our audience. They want to know that as a climate activist, what is your opinion towards digital waste? Like, as we know, the world is all towards digitalize, digitalization mm -hmm. this time. It's known as the era of digital uh, time and everything. So what about the digital waste? How do we conserve that or use that? Digital waste, right? Great. One of the companies that I have, apart from Zoba Advisory, is called Climate Technology Solutions. One of the things we do in Climate Technology Solutions is that we create intelligence management <laughs> systems for the energy sector, right? Uh, it's more focused on operation and management. And then for the waste sectors, we build technology solutions. And it depends on the kind of waste. It can be solid waste. Like it depends on the company. We build various technology solutions for each company. It can be it can be an app for your company. It can be maybe uh, a, a, um, a waste bin that is integrated using maybe IoT or any digital solutions as that. So it can be. It depends on the kind of waste and on, on the company's uh, need, right? It can be solid waste. It can be uh, liquid waste. It can be um, it can be electronic waste, depending on the kind of waste the company is bringing out. Like it can be paper waste, it can be plastic, and all that. So we create apps for one, and we create um we create like we create like waste bins, right? That uh, that have. I'm not a developer, right? I'm not a developer, right? but we create these um, bins, right? That can help sort waste out, and then we create uh, like then like an app that can help on in the um, facilitation and process from picking to dumping to whatever to even um to even um what do they call it? Sorry, the noise in my background just interrupted me. Yeah, for, to even transactions as that. So when you talked about digital waste, I want to understand that he's talking about how to use technology. In the in in waste for waste management, right? That's what I want, I am trying to understand. So part of the things we do in climate technology is that we build maybe it just depends on the kind of maybe the company comes and say, oh, we we have solid waste and we don't know how to manage our waste, so we can create the systems for them. So that is one way to actually go about it. You know, create technological solutions for those waste companies. I just hope I am able to answer this question. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. That was your vision that as a leader, this would be your initiative. So, of course, that was a pretty nice answer, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, like, would you like to talk about the kind of work that you do and would like to share about your experiences, which uh, either motivated you? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you put your efforts and you do not get, um, you know, the results which you were actually waiting for. How you kept yourself motivated through those times? And what was your step back then? Very, very true. You put in effort and sometimes you don't get the results that you hoped for. You know, I've lived, let me say not so long, but I've lived to, to my late 20s in this life. And there's one thing I understand. 
once I keep on trying, 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 even if it doesn't work mm-hmm. this way, it's just it might, it's just like a redirection to another way that might be that might work out very fine for me, you know. So it has always been like that. So when I get to a point where I want to give up, I ask myself, why should you give up? If you look back, if you like track, the, you look back in time, you can say, okay, this is what happened this time, and I wanted to give up, and then I did something like this, and then it happened, it, it worked out. So why should I give up? Now the time, the climate technology solution we applied for an team, and after signing a memorandum of understanding, right, the company said, I just woke up the next morning. I was very happy that we have been selected. And I received the mail. They said, we are no longer part of the Akatin. I was so sad, very, very sad. I wanted to cry. I wanted to give up. I was even saying, God, let the world end the next day. I'm tired because I have built the solution, you know, something like that. But I went to church. That was a Sunday. And when I came back, that was the same day I received a message from the United Nations as regards that same solution. And they were inviting me to Janney to come here to join an Akaten. So imagine something like that. So the thing is that you don't give up, right? Life is not smooth. It's like this. And if it is really smooth, it would, you know, they say comfort kills ambition. It would make you, you wouldn't even do much because if you're very comfortable, Ideas doesn't come in a comfortable situation. You wouldn't even think. But when um, when you're in a place, right, where it's rough, a little bit rough, you, know, you build resilience, you begin to think, okay, how can I resolve this? How can I resolve this? So you don't give up. I, I, uh, the things I've seen in this life has made me to be very resilient. And then I don't know because giving up is not even an option because then if I give up, what will I get? I just have to keep trying. I just have to keep trying. And it's just that way for me. Unfortunately, it's just that way. Unfortunately, it's just that way for me. <laughs> Thank you. I think then not giving up is kind of your motto, which I think everyone, <laughs> this current youth should learn from you. Uh, talking about not giving up, uh, what are the uh, challenges that you used to face as um, you know, you're working in a sector which works for a huge cause? It's not just, um, you know, you just give an order and everyone's going to follow. What was the kind of uh, hurdles that you faced during this entire process? Like as an individual okay. and as a team. Okay, I'm going to actually break this down. In the renewable energy sector, when I started, one of the, uh, the, the challenges I faced was that I'm female, right? And I prepare having meal males like because they believe it's the male that can actually climb the roof is the males that can do this thing and all i just wanted was a chance and i'm grateful for the company that gave me a chance to show my skills so it's very important that you give people a chance it wasn't easy because almost everybody just wants to have like you just have this concept that it's a man's job why do you want to be in this sector it's a man's job it's a man's duty right you get it but i think i read so many articles that actually encourage women to go into the renewable energy sector and actually encourage people to hire women in the renewable energy sector and also not underpay them because i actually experienced that too women have been underpaid in the sector it's something i actually experienced too when it comes to things also um Okay, let me leave the renewable energy sector. Let me come to maybe a team or the spirit advocacy team and maybe all the stuff. So one of the other issues I've faced is um, I noticed uh, very recently uh, when it comes to this things, it's not easy, right? Penetrating your government, it's not easy. Politics and everything wants to just sometimes ridicule all the things people plan for, ridicule everything, and maybe don't make it because you know the youth are not there. Because they are not there, they just feel like, oh, the only thing the youth will do is to just talk. If they finish talking, they will go back home and sleep. So sometimes penetrating the government to implement those policies are not easy. It's not easy negotiating with them or to come in terms to tell them that, oh, do this. It's not easy because they feel like, oh, they are way down and we are here. So we will do anything we want to do. So these things are part of the issues that I have um, experienced in this sector, both as an advocate, both as, um, as, a, as a solar consultant in the renewable energy sector. And yeah, these are the things that I have actually experienced. Ma'am, uh, talking about uh, these issues, these are just not um, you know, uh, limited to your country or to our country. It's about the whole world, right? 
and um, mm-hmm. when situation like these come one of the greatest factor is the fuel that we use the energy source uh, what is your ideology about uh, clean fuel or clean uh, energy source sorry uh, you you would have to come again with your question because i didn't really get that um like i was trying to tell that uh in this current world we are trying to use so many fuels and energy sources for the different industries or at homes at every place what is your ideology for a clean energy source which is also climate friendly uh, there are a lot of clean energy sources that are climate friendly but at the end of the day um uh, it's very good that each country right i, I really love your question is very intelligent the brilliant question at the end of the day it, it's um good that each country knows what will work for them right like what will work for them it's very difficult to push the sale of green hydrogen in nigeria but it's much easier to push the sale of um solar technologies in nigeria right so the same thing i was listening to the news was it today or yesterday about nuclear energy right and i was they were talking about nuclear energy and they were talking about coal i don't want to mention the country but the country clearly stated that if they look at the 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 kind of um, the kind of um, the country that they have like the, the maybe the environment and everything they would know very well that the nuclear power doesn't work well for them right because you want to consider you want to consider earthquakes you want to consider the people the people here the kind of energy that they use for me in africa the thing that can sell the most like if you want to create access to clean energy it is a solar technology right this this is what we people would want to comfortably like because okay the challenge in africa is finance but this is uh, this is something that people can still comfortably buy when you come to electric cars it is not easy but i know we will get there to a stage where people will buy more of electric cars right so you want to consider these things you want to consider the kind of um, people you want to sell to and the kind of um, environment that they have if the things the solution you are trying to implement there is something that will cost more um or good for them so these are the things you need to check very well why there are very many we have like your tama we have like the wind we have like the solar panels and every other thing i've gone to like maybe several countries and not all those are uh, not all all the countries use the same kind of energy some people prefer to use wind like in their solar farms a lot of like like in europe a lot of people use wind but in africa you have more people that use solar energy so you want to consider these things right before you know pushing the access of clean energy in that locality thank you thank you ma'am uh, ma'am uh, like as one of your domains is green hydrogen people are very intrigued to know about uh, what is green hydrogen all about and uh, what really uh, motivated you to choose that as your domain i didn't choose green hydrogen right like i said um solar panel it's my it's more of the kind of energy i like right but the thing with green hydrogen is that youth for green hydrogen actually reached out to me and said they feel like okay i can actually um bring more people right to advocate for green hydrogen green hydrogen is also um in the renewable energy sector as a source of clean energy right on like the gray hydrogen like i said before so um yeah i'm bringing those people together right yeah, to create awareness of the benefits of green hydrogen to go out there and say okay so we we have a group and i'm very proud of the people when they are doing very well as we got to um talking about green hydrogen but in nigeria right um it's just a very i can tell you uh, maybe 1% of people that has uh, that have anything right now to do with green hydrogen because we are looking at um a, a way where we can bring in um buses right like vehicles that uses green hydrogen because on um, transportation is a uh, one thing that is very i or like in the eu where most people use train we use buses we use cars and we use um, tricycles and all that so we feel like okay if people can afford to buy electric cars um they might be afford to take public transport that uses that that buses that uses green hydrogen so you see that's one way we can actually push the sale or the the use of green hydrogen in nigeria right yeah 
um like we have spoken about how far you have come and uh, what are the hurdles that you faced and uh, like what are your future plans like what what you people okay are you there ma'am yes yes uh, so i was asking that what are your future plans what are your future goals for which you are working currently and what is the uh, you know um, the thing that pushes you every day to achieve a certain goal mm. <laughs> you know most times i try as much as possible to first of all pray before refreshing my meals when i wake up right but i have so many solutions and ideas that i see in prototypes we have um uh, solutions that are working right that are actually um creating the things we want to see that are resolving the problems we want to see and they are still new ideas so these ideas right the inspiration did not come for it to just sit in my head and lay there i have to wake up and work on it because i believe that there is somebody out there that the solution is for there's somebody out there that i need to resolve this or a problem and then if i have the idea why sit on it so i have to wake up every day if somebody is making the clothes right in the factory so that i don't get cold if somebody is cooking out there so that i see something to eat or if somebody is um, farming out there so that i see so i see something to buy and cook why should i sit and not do, the, do my home part of it so I, if the idea come i need to develop it right we are all here to support each other if everybody on their own and says I, i don't want to do anything again i want to start sleeping at home i don't want to do anything again you can imagine what the world would be like right so somebody needs to come up and say okay this instagram channel i have to create it so that people can connect with them with great minds right this community i need to create it so that people can have a cleaner society cleaner environment this stuff i need to do it so everybody have something that they need to do and nobody should sleep on it when you wake up do it because somebody out there is doing their own and you don't do it because you are looking for maybe money for survival no don't really do it for that you do it because somebody out there is doing something you yourself might not know and you know they are doing it for you so imagine maybe the military people that are in the forest fighting in war or the order just to keep you safe just to protect you and you on your own you refuse to do your own part of the job because you feel like oh why should i do it all right why should i stop it but whether you like it or not somebody out there is working directly or indirectly for you so you have to do your own part so when you wake up in the morning you don't sit on your ideas you have to work you have to work but someone out there is also working for you so that's it so this that's it right that's it and i want everybody on this on this show this live show to also know that somebody out there is doing something for you whether you like it or not directly or indirectly it could be your parents it could be it could be the military people that are out there fighting to keep you safe you don't know but somebody out there is actually working it could be sadvik so foundation that is creating awareness as regards to climate change so somebody out there is actually doing something you cannot sit on your own ideas you have to work for you to receive that inspiration is because it is you that has to develop that solution so you have to start working on it right yeah that's it uh ma'am you have attended many global uh, mm-hmm. conferences right so people are really intrigued to know about those experiences how you what was the experience what you exactly did there uh how was your experience interacting with other countries and talk about their mm-hmm. initiatives and everything oh my goodness the first time i left my country and um, <laughs> i met with diverse people ah uh, it was it was it was it was uh, fun at the same time it wasn't very easy right but then um yeah we we did blend right because the goal was the same because we wanted the same thing we wanted to see change we were creating change so at the end of the day regardless of background regardless of language barrier regardless of um whatever title or anything at the end of the day if the goal is the same you find a way to work together and that is just it okay see you are from indian and i'm from nigeria and yeah we are having this conversation not because you are not not because i can speak indian not because i be yes, sorry or because i can dance <laughs> but then you will understand that the goal is the same at the end of the day we will come together and you know foster that goal 
So when I went to all those different conferences and I meet different people, because we have the same goal, because we want to see the same thing. It was very easy to flow, regardless of the language, regardless of the title, regardless of the racial differences. It was very much easy to flow because we wanted to see something happen, right? Yeah, so that's not like it. It's very, and I hope everybody here too will just know travel around, you meet people and you know because the goal is the same, just like boy, uh, the conference of youth that is coming when we all go there, you see people from Africa, people from Europe, people from America, people from Asia but you see that everybody will still be saying the same thing, everybody will still be talking about the same thing, change, change change, that is it you wouldn't even, you wouldn't remember if the person is even from Asia or if the person is from Germany or anything it will just be focused on that that one goal the thing you want to see, so it's more like that. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. As you said, that you uh, got a chance to interact with people of different cultures. Uh, so, I do like that. so, would you like to share a bit about your culture, culture of Nigeria, and everything? <laughs> Um, we have like diverse cultural right, and then different language, like different tribe, over 256 languages in just my country. And the funny thing is that I only understand maybe two properly, and then the general language. We don't speak English. The general we speak English as a general language, but then we have another type of English. It's called a broken English that we speak. So when I speak a broken English, you would not even understand it. And another funny thing. When I when I came to Germany, the first thing, one of the, the first things that I did was I tried to teach the, the friends that I made how to speak pidgin English. <laughs> I well, would you would English. you just try that accent once, maybe? Just okay, say okay. something. I'll try to guess it. My people, wow, Nadeo, I am very happy to be on this show. <laughs> oh God, it's so different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I said is that. My people, how are you guys doing? That I am very happy to be on this show. My people, how on a day? Are they very happy to be for this show? <laughs> so it's more like that. So, yeah, that's what we do. That's how we speak it. But then it's it's more like English, but it's called a broken English or it's called a pigeon English. Yeah, I'm very happy to be on this show today. <laughs> Uh, talking about our culture, uh, we greet each other by saying Namaste. So, could you please just try that out Namaste. once? Namaste. Oh, you also know that so well. I don't watch a lot of um, uh, Indian movies. I know I watch Indian movies, but not the Z word. The Z word, I don't watch Z word a lot because of the suspense. I'm not very good with the suspense. But the Indian movies, the action, oh, I love it. Like, there was one I watched, Lion. Lion is like a, an Australian and an Indian movie. Uh, Lion, it's very nice, but you should see it, right? So most times I learn those, yeah, Namaste, and, you know, oh, God, I like it. <laughs> I like yeah, it. like, the, it was a good it was so fun interacting with you. You're such a fun person. Like we really <laughs> hope that we meet you soon. Like all the audience are writing the same that they are very eager to meet you in person. I hope that we get the chance soon. I look forward to meeting them too. I look forward to meeting them too. <laughs> Yeah, and I look forward to meeting you and maybe trying some Indian delicacies. I think I had one here in Germany, right? I I guess we had one in Germany recently. Um, I, I can't remember the name, but it was really, really, really nice. And I even have some friends. I have um, Srishti and I have um, 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 B. Singh. I call him B. Singh. His name is uh, <laughs> Brian Singh, something like that. So they're really nice. I met them here in Germany and they're very nice. We were very friendly too. <laughs> Big okay, yes, uh, sorry to interrupt again. Uh, our audience just want you to be in that namaste position once so that they can take a screenshot. It's like this, right? Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, everyone's very eager to meet you. Everyone's like, uh, come to India. And uh, there is a quotation in India, uh, Atithi Devo Bhava, which means uh, we consider our guests as our God. So we are going to give you a godly hospitality once you reach us. <laughs> so we are looking forward to meet you. Thank you so much. I was going through the meaning of your name, ma'am. 
uh would you just like to talk about it a bit my words sorry your uh the meaning of your name to zoba okay the meaning of my name right the meaning of my name is god save me and it also means god protects me and god protects me and sometimes the short form is god saves i think maybe i was very stubborn they just had to give me the name or maybe they knew a lot of trouble was going to come to my life and they just had to give me the thing because God has been saving me a lot. <laughs> God has been saving me. Yeah, it means God saved me. Yeah, <laughs> actually when I was going through your profile, all of us, all of the entire team was going through your profile and we were talking about how relatable is her name. Like it's just not, uh, you know, confined or limited to her. It's about the entire nation, about the entire world that... Uh, we should be connected to the uh, greater part that's uh, above us and try to you know, spread the positivity in the best possible way so thank you ma'am for this session oh, and it was a great honor to have you with us thank <laughs> you stay again ma'am <laughs> thank you thank you uh, thank, thank you, thank you for everybody. connecting thank you so much okay thank you ma'am have a great day ahead you too